so in the first century CE, we don't have at least anything that we know of uh, that survived. Because uh, if, if anybody made a depiction of Jesus in the first century, we don't have it. But we don't have a depiction of Jesus in the first century. We have different depictions of him in the following centuries. And they seem to contradict one another in some cases drastically. At least some people think they contradict each other. What do you think about it? Um, <clears throat> the the images of Jesus in later centuries, you mean, or yes, how how he looked in later centuries? Yeah, well, I mean, in my book, what did Jesus look like? I um, I go back through time and and think about how Jesus is depicted now to start off with, and then go back. I go back through the centuries to the first century and what we know about how people looked generally in the in the first century, how men look, dressed and how Jews dressed in the in the first century. Um, but if we're looking for the very first image of Jesus, I think uh, that the fir very first image of Jesus that survives in art, we have to look at Dura Europos. Um, Dura Europos was a, uh, a Roman colony right on the edge of Syria, still right on the edge of Syria, on the Euphrates River. And it was destroyed in the year 256 CE. And that meant that um, everything was sealed under this destruction layer. And very fortunately, one of the things that was sealed was a house church. Hmm. And on the walls of the baptistry, uh, the room where baptisms took place in the house church, there were these amazing murals. And on the north wall and the upper register, there are two images of Jesus side by side doing miraculous things. On, on the left side, he is healing the paralyzed man. And on the right side, he is rescuing Peter from the water when he walks on the water in Matthew's gospel. And um, in both these images, Jesus is imagined as having slightly curly hair in the oldest, uh, the, the original images from the from the archaeological site. You can see see that, and he's got a short tunic, um, and he's got a, a robe or a mantle, a, a cloak or mantle wrapped around him, and so he's depicted in a way that's very consistent with how men dressed in the Greco-Roman world, short tunic, um, mantle wrapped around him. But the curly hair is the dead giveaway. Um, the curly hair was associated with certain gods like Dionysus. Dionysus was the god of wine. He was always depicted as young and incredibly beautiful. Um, and and there was there's quite a lot that suggests that people imagined Jesus somewhat like Dionysus, this young, gorgeous god. Not long-haired, not bearded, um, not with long robes down to his ankles and baggy sleeves, but he was wearing um, a sort of regular clothing, but he, Dionysus styling. Um, and so what, what you think from that is actually... People are imagining Jesus in line with him being a god. You know, he is divine. And so they needed to think, you know, how is a divine man going to be shown and, and using the repertoire of Greco-Roman art? So that's our re earliest image of Jesus. And it's quite consistent. That type of Jesus with the curly hair, looking very young and very handsome, you know, I mean, you know, he's more like a a teenager than a, you know, 30 year old man. Um, that type of Jesus continues on all through the third century. So this is a third century image through the third century, through the fourth century. But at the end of the fourth century, it starts to get eclipsed by another type of imagining Jesus. And that's more that the Jesus we're familiar with, the sort of long haired, bearded, type of Jesus. What do you think Jesus most likely looks like? So what I, 
looked at, um, and then the book I start off with this and, and then I, I go back to it at the end is, um, well, let me just, just sort of start off with the, with the problem of what Jesus looked like, the mystery of what Jesus looked like, because we don't realize it is a mystery because we're so s stuck on the idea of what Jesus looked like. We, Jesus is, as I said in the book, you know, literally iconic. But there's so many icons of Jesus. There's so many images of Jesus in Hollywood and uh, the, the film portrayals and documentaries about Jesus and in Western art and whatever. It, we know what Jesus looked like. Um, so when we read the Gospels, we had this pre-existing idea of this is what he looked like. And when we imagine the Gospels in our minds as we're reading them, we just sort of insert our image of Jesus into whatever accounts. You know, I went to Sunday school. I've got all of the Sunday school Jesuses in my brain, you know, just completely downloaded. My image of Jesus is very much that sort of Sunday school Jesus. But then if you look at the Gospels, there's absolutely nothing about what he actually looked like. Um, occasionally references to his clothing, but nothing about his appearance. And it is quite a mystery because in Greco-Roman biography, there are all these depictions of the heroes of whatever is being written about. And um, I, there's Augustus and all sorts of other people. And, and, and that was important because describing someone's appearance often would give readers signals about their character there was an idea that a king should be tall and handsome for example or um, you could read people's uh, faces in line with the ancient art of physiognomy which was um, interpreting their features as as you might interpret tea leaves you know it's sort of this, you've got a fine nose that is rounded and that means something you know um, so, so describing someone gave people uh, clues about them. And, you know, Moses was very good looking. David was very good looking. And it's written in the accounts of Moses and David that, that this is something that people felt about them. So when it comes to Jesus, especially given he's, he's, that there are references to David and Moses all the time in the, in the Gospels, um, it's amazing no one says, and he entered the town and he was considered stunningly good looking and tall and people were really impressed by him, which is what you expect in, in a Greco-Roman biography. Um, instead, nothing is said at all about him. And what I, what I suggested is that there might have been some sort of confusion of message and that the gospel writers wanted to say, oh, yes, Jesus is really like David and Moses, but they also wanted to say he's like the suffering servant of Isaiah 53. And um, and in Isaiah 53, it, it, it indicates that, that the suffering servant had no special appearance that made people want him to be king, that we desire him for, for kingship. Um, so it was the suffering servant explains Jesus' death. And so if you've got that model that, that he wasn't good looking, a suffering servant, you, you can't then say he was really good looking like David and Moses. So they were in a bit of a bind about what they said about Jesus. But then I also thought, well, that might be accurate for all we know, because uh, there's no indication that he was super good looking. <laughs> Um, he might have been quite average looking. He might have been of average height, you know, not particularly tall, not particularly short, um, more uh, the, as as every other guy, you know, that there's nothing particularly standouty about um, Jesus. And, and that in itself is something, you know, in terms of what Jesus actually looked like, because that enabled me then to say, okay, well, what was the average man in Judea in the first century? So that's a rather long-winded backdrop to, uh, what, to answering your question. It's about imagining an average man from um, first century Judea. And that, that was my first step towards really trying to visualize Jesus. So if you had to pick 
where where do you lean towards that Jesus probably looked like like maybe a typical Galilean Jew perhaps? Yeah, Galilean Judean Jew. Um, so Judea as a nation encompasses Galilee, and Jesus' heritage is from Judea, from the line of David, and that's very very emphatically said across a lot of early Christian texts. Mm. So he comes from the line of David. So he is a Judean. Um, he's an old Judean and um, associated with Bethlehem, I think likely born in Bethlehem as um, Matthew and Luke have it. So, um, so then what we know of Judean Jews um, comes from the, the skeletal remains from cemeteries. And the, the, the main work that has been done recently is by a guy called Yossi Nagar, an Israeli archaeologist and um, or physical anthropologist, I should say, um, who really has tried to understand skeletal remains and thinking about um, average heights and bone structure and ethnicity. And, um, and what, what Yossi Nagar says is we should imagine Judeans of this time. So yes, yeah, so it, it, it's thinking about what that profile is and what um, Yossi Nagar has said is looking comparatively at populations, the Jews of the Second Temple period look a lot like Iraqis, uh, Babylonians. And that makes sense because mm. when um, Judeans were taken off to Babylon and the, and that included the line of David who from Bethlehem, who were part of those who lived after Babylon. Um, you know, the, the likelihood is, I wouldn't say they intermarried with Babylonians, but the, the Babylonians would have done what other conquering peoples do when the, the Judean women would have been subject to mm. abuse by the, uh, the their captors. Um, and that meant that the Second Temple um, Jews had quite a bit of Babylonian um, in them as well, um, and so he can he can see a particular profile that is distinctive of Jews of the Second Temple period and uh, coming back from from Babylon, and that goes all the way through um, to the second century when Judeans were um, no longer in the area of, of Judea, so. Um, so that profile it gives me a, a good idea about what people look like, and um, and so we have to imagine someone, you know, what five foot four. Yeah, so so our, uh, heights between five foot two, five foot six, you know, something like that. Not very tall, um, and and uh, brown skinned, black haired, brown eyed. Uh, you think a Middle Eastern type of person, um, and I Iraqi Jews today seem to be a very good com comparison. So I, I knew Iraqi Jews years ago when I was working on a kibbutz in, in Israel, and, and actually I was thinking a lot about uh, them and in terms of how to imagine Jesus. Um, so it is a, a certain kind of Middle Eastern type of person, um, brown-skinned person. And, and I think that is important because the, the, the white-skinned, um, blonde-haired Jesus that might be so common, and, and, and if you search on the internet, that's what you find, that sort of European Jesus. Um, when you think about the history of colonization and what has happened to brown skinned black skinned people as a result of what white skinned people have done um it it means that if you have a white skinned jesus it, it creates a an association between a, a, a white skinned person and and jesus and a colonizing kind of type um and and ultimately, you know, all the kind of racism that has gone along with certain types of Christian understanding of the white skin um, Jesus. So it's not just historically inaccurate to have a, a white skin Jesus. It's also 
the way that plays into certain narratives um, in colonial times. Hello, viewers. Thanks for watching this video from the History Valley YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if any of you wish to further support this channel, please consider checking out this channel's Patreon page and becoming a patron. And or donate through PayPal or through Super Chat during your live stream. Thank you.